Hello and welcome back to another class guide. My name is Heiken and today we're revisiting War Tales classes. These are deep dive guides. I am doing regular guides with precise, on point, no BS, no repetition mode where we get straight to the point. I'm revisiting each of the classes mainly because a lot has changed. Helmets have come out since I released the original class guides. The Pugilist has been uh, released and the fourth class skill has been released meaning 7th uh, and 5th levels got new class skills. And I got a couple of questions from the original guide. So this is not a replacement of the original guide. This is seemingly just an add-on uh, with alternative builds. Uh, the current guide will go through two additional builds. Sometimes they are variations of the original build. Sometimes they are actually new builds. And we're going to see how they fare. On top of that, I want to add some gameplay footage, so stay tuned to see how the classes are actually playing out. Let's jump right into it. Alright, this time we're going to take a look at the Ranger. As always, I brought two builds uh, with me that are going to lead you to victory. Number one is going to be a Poisoner build, and the other one is going to be a new take on the Assassin's uh, build. I deliberated whether I want to show you the Cutthroat build as well. But I think the Assassin's build does what the Cutthroat build does just a little bit better. Cutthroat has a few advantages on fighting boss enemies, but uh, in a normal setting, Assassin is just trumping the build. Therefore, I'm going to take a fresh spin on the Assassin build. But today, we're starting with the Poisoner build first. As always, attributes into equipment into the actual build order. As for attributes, the Ranger, just like any DPS, will require uh, to focus on critical hit. But before we can do that, let's get the necessities out of the way. You first want to do Willpower 15 to make sure that you're not dying to get through the, uh, to that critical threshold. Also, Willpower is always good because it uh, high Willpower means the enemies will flee faster. Movement uh, then, uh, typically, you want to go to either 20 or 22 as base value. In this particular case, since I have so much crit, I was getting away with 20 equipment uh, with 20 base value, and the rest goes into critical hit. The base value here is already crazily high with 38% base uh, value. You can uh, see that uh, uh, this guy here is an alchemist, so it's just maximizing dexterity, no crit uh, from there. However, they do have uh, the dualist uh, trait with 5% um, extra crit, then 20 to 25% from the path bonus. We have looked at that. Uh, the path is uh, crime and chaos. If you have finished that, all companions gain 5% critical chance per wanted level. So if you are wanted five, that increases by 25%. Then we have 45% uh, from equipment, uh, which can be up to 55. So 45 from the armor layers. And if you're using sharpening oil, which I'm not using on this build, you could get up to 55%. And if that is not enough, there is food. Um, beer infused wolf ribs increase critical damage by 20% and stuffed cabbage increase critical hit chance by 15%. A staple in the diet of any adventurer. Let's walk through the equipment. As always, I want to use equipment that simply is craftable for you guys so that uh, you are uh, seeing that the equipment is not carrying the run, but essentially the build. And the poison rogue uh, will use a self-created dagger, self-created light armor and a self-created uh, helmet. So all of this is craftable a craftable belt accessory. And as an offhand, uh, we're going to use an alchemical accessory. There are a couple of offhands that are feasible and I'll go through them in a second. So let's uh, look through the helmet. Uh, the Arcadian steel bread is the light armor helmet and we're going to use the Assassin Strychnin. Um, which uh, is an imprint that you can put onto the helmet for 25% more damage against poisoned units. It's kind of a self-explanatory um, deal uh, for an assassin that is using poisons a lot because this, t uh, this way you simply get a 25% uh, bonus to damage. As for the armor layers, we're going to use Mir's Brooch, which is 15% critical hit at the expense of one movement, which is why we want to go all that high in movement. Um, and uh, finally, we are using um, on the dagger 
uh, a poisonous oil which has a 50 percent chance to apply poison we're combining that with a poison oil concentrate uh, which really puts it up to a hundred percent chance of applying poison um, as always when you have mastered uh, the alchemy uh, tree and you're creating those uh, trinkets those bells accessories you can uh, put a skill point into poison mastery a skill point into bleeding mastery and a skill point into burning mastery which increases poison from five to six percent uh, to uh, per stack uh, bleeding mastery uh, from uh, 20 to 25 percent and burning mastery uh, from 10 to 15 percent so very strong increases there we're going to of course use that keep in mind that means every single stack of poison deals six percent of damage um, to the hit points and that for multiple poison stacks which this build is going to do really adds up so poisonous oil is number one uh, the other one is perforating oil which allows us to ignore 50 percent of the guard of the enemy super helpful to go through heavier armor targets now let's talk about offhands because there are a couple of options available. As a standard, if you're uh, just wanting to play it safe, I think the petrified uh, uh, throwing steel sickle, which is uh, the Arcadian steel sickle and then alchemically infused is a great option, but it is a pricey one because you need Arcadian steel in order to uh, create these sickles and then you need um, quite a bit alchemy in order to uh, to create um, even more on top of that uh, this is great it deals a lot of damage confusion is a fantastic debuff don't get me wrong i like it but it is pricey the cheaper alternatives uh, that i like to use are incendiary flasks because what this build is going to do is it creates kind of a poison aoe effect and uh, if you can then layer on top of that an incendiary uh, AOE effect, then you're hitting multiple enemies both with poison and then afterwards uh, with uh, burning. So that means the build, you will see that in a second how it can achieve it, can create eight poison stacks AOE onto everyone. Eight times six uh, is 48% uh, base hit point damage already. If you add 15% uh, flaming damage on top of that, we're already at 65% damage, just AOE against multiple targets. Uh, but it gets even sicker than that uh, if, uh, if you give me a second. Then there is another um, option that I oftentimes like to use, which is the Swarm Flask, uh, where the build becomes a little bit more supportive. Uh, AOE attack, uh, which applies to Fever to all enemies in the area, really increasing that damage by 20% from everything. So that is that would be kind of more an offhand that you would uh, want to use if others can follow up. And then there is a final offhand that I wanted to highlight, which you can also um, use. And we're going to use that all targets in the area lose 10% of their maximum health immediately with the hand bomblets. Uh, and if you critically hit, which you always will do, it applies bleeding. Now let that sink in for a second, because now here is here is the kicker. Bleeding reduces with a bleeding mastery uh, the hit points by 25%. Uh, so all of a sudden um, the hand bomblet uh, deals 10% of damage. Uh, you do have 48% uh, from uh, the poison on everyone and so that's 58% and then another 25% from bleeding, right? So you're at, you're going all the way up to 83% of uh, damage against the hit point pool straight away uh, with that combination. So really, really interesting starter. Let's take a look what the build elsewise has to offer. We are going to look into the actual build. Valorous victory, every time the unit kills an enemy, you gain one Valor. That's kind of the standard for most of uh, the um, Rangers. We're going to go into Poisoner in this build, uh, which applies four poisons to all of the units in the area. And those who are already poisoned will get vulnerability. So that um, means the next um, attack will be an automatic crit not as great in the end game because uh, you are critting 100 percent of the time but it is quite nice during the leveling process the four stacks nonetheless are great now next up um, i personally would uh, potentially go into ordeal uh, during 
the leveling process is every time a unit attacks a bleeding or burning or poisoned unit, the attack also applies to feather, which increases the damage taken by 20%. Let that sink in because you will have a lot of uh, burning, poison or bleeding units uh, with that build. And every time anyone attacks any of that, it is going to be 20% more damage stacking on top of that. So great group buff, really like it a lot. Into explosive gas, uh, gas which doubles the poison stacks on all units in the area. Then leaves a poil, uh, pool of poison, which just makes it so much less attractive for anyone to run through it. So uh, the uh, poison itself, the four, already are bad. This here is upping it to eight. Uh, if you stack two rangers that are both um, skilled in poison, then uh, you can uh, even go four, eight with the uh, first one into 12 and then 24 with the second one. 100% killing all of uh, the enem uh, enemies in that area, unless they are, of course, poison immune. Um, so in that case, it wouldn't work that well, which is why I oftentimes don't uh, double down on individual classes. But if you fancy that, be my guest. That's a really nice combination. Unstoppable uh, to be able to move through enemies freely. And then the class specialization goes into instinctive throw. After using any skill, deals damage uh, to the closest enemies within four meters. Uh, I am not 100% sure if that will trigger or deal. We're going to uh, test that out, but I would say no, because it is not, an, uh, not considered an attack, but it is nonetheless a good uh, ability to have because you will just deal extra damage. What it definitely does trigger is it triggers the on-hit effects and it uh, benefits from critical, uh, from critical strike overall. So that's really it. Let's see how the build performs. All right, let's take a look at the Ranger. I play tested the build and it is even more drastic than I showcased it. So we're finding, it, uh, finding ourselves in a fight against level 14 enemies and just let that sink in. Let's uh, see how this is going to play out. Uh, we are, uh, I'm actually going to move in and are starting to hit all of uh, these guys at once. Can we even hit all of them? There might be a chance that we can. So, barely not, but I would want to hit the tanks. Nah, let's hit these guys. All right, so we're going to apply uh, not only four, but five poison sticks uh, because I realized just how crazily good uh, the extra ability of um, of uh, poisoner uh, poisoner is uh, because the concentration the concentrate even works with AOE ability. So instead of four, that's five. Now we're then following up uh, with uh, doubling the poison, which brings everybody from five um, first from five to um, six due to the ordeal, then doubles it and then puts another two stacks on top of it. So we're now at 14 poison. We're then having a small explosion, 10% uh, damage plus another poison and bleeding, which means all of these guys are already dead. I don't, I don't need to attack uh, them anymore. Instead, uh, we're just moving way back. Uh, we're going to uh, use uh, technical order in uh, this case uh, to showcase how good the brute uh, of a tank is. Uh, let's see how this is going to play down. Uh, we're just going to look exemplarily at uh, the lieutenant there and his movement. So lieutenant moves in, thinks he has a great position. He does uh, deal a lot of damage, but look at that. He just one pops, which means all we need to do is we need to control these guys. And once that is uh, done, they're dead. Nothing is going to happen. So if that is not ultra strong, I don't know what is. Next up, we're going to take a look at the second Ranger build that I had in mind. This time we're going to the classical assassin build. Um, which could be really anything that you would uh, want it to be. It is oftentimes a cleanup build for um, uh, heavily injured enemies. 
and it is really an all-around absolute uh, fantastic build this is more the updated version of uh, the original build in my build guide so as always we want to go 15 willpower we want to go uh, 22 movement and then the rest goes into critical uh, hit nothing particularly changing here we have the same equipment but we're going to use a slight twist on the equipment we're going to run with assassin strike nine uh, still which is 25 percent against poison units because there will be still poisoning uh, within all of that because we do have uh, the uh, poisoning oil here and we're using the poisoning oil concentrate we're continuing to use perforating oil to ignore guard and deal with heavier um, uh, armored and guarded units and we do have three times critical hit just to max out the critical hit now as an offhand i want to showcase a couple of options here like i said we could go with a sickle and essentially um, deal extra sickle uh, damage or I will in this uh, particular playthrough use Swamp Flask to showcase just how great two feather stacks and uh, damage increase on multiple enemies could look like. That's just a bit of support or even setting up enemies for them uh, for themselves. The best offense that you can use later are epic uh, offense where there are additional uh, attacks triggered or additional uh, throwing attacks triggered every single time you attack an enemy. So that in, it's a, uh, in itself would of course be an, a better offhand. But for now, let's go with the Swamp Flask and let's take a look at the skills before we see some gameplay footage. As for the skills, we're having a similar build. Uh, we want to kill an uh, enemy unit and be rewarded for it. So Valorous Victory to just ease the load on the Valor a little bit. This time we go into Assassin and Assassin uh, deals a lot of damage and applies bleeding. If the target is already bleeding, damage is doubled. Uh, critical damage of uh, the attacks are increased by 30%. So that's uh, the good part about it with Assassin. Uh, your critical uh, hit damage is going to be massive, which is why I like that build with 100% crit. We are yet again going to go for Ordeal, where damage uh, taken is increased whenever you're uh, attacking a bleeding or burning unit, which is almost always uh, the case. Uh, then it also applies to Fever. You can use that in itself um, and already uh, kind of start with an incendiary flask, apply burning and then uh, feather triggers. Uh, so that uh, is a good combination uh, by, it, uh, by itself. You don't need the feather flask for it. Um, so either way works. I just always like ordeal as a skill. We're then going into cold-blooded, attacks from behind increase by 35%. Oftentimes I find myself in a situation where I don't need, uh, I don't have a lot of engaged uh, characters simply because I'm dealing so much damage that the enemies don't have the luxury of being engaged. But if you ever are engaged, then this here is great. There is an alternative that I started to like more and more lately, which is low blow. Uh, all enemies are basically having a 50% chance uh, to miss. And on the upgraded version, it's four meters, which is a sizable amount. So you can basically take out a lot of enemies. Either way, I'm a little bit torn on both of uh, those. Um, I would personally say uh, low blow is a little bit worse uh, more from the higher difficulties because um, you want to spend your Valor somewhere else, but it's, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. Unstoppable to get where we want to be. Class specialization and then into Instinctive Thrower. Instinctive Thrower as an ability, I would potentially, when leveling, I would go Instinctive Thrower into that and then uh, use Ordeal as the class specialization. That's potentially the better route. Instinctive Thrower is just a very core staple mechanic of getting a lot of damage out of uh, the build. You're going to throw a dagger uh, at a nearby target after using a skill and it uh, synergizes very well with a lot of the skills that the rogue has unless you're playing on extreme difficulty you can just spam all of the one uh, valor skills including low blow and so on uh, to just create a lot of daggers and that's how the build is going to deal uh, plenty plenty of damage you're going to see just how well it functions Good, we find ourselves in a battle at two fronts. We have one front very well under control, the other one is so-and-so. A perfect option for a ranger to dip in and out. 
and I want to showcase some of uh, the options that the Ranger does have available with that build. For starters, we want uh, to move up the Ranger whenever, and we want to move a little bit closer, the Ranger does have uh, the um, uh, ability to reset movement with instinctive throw. So what we're going to do is we are actually just using any skill to get more movement. You can see that resets our movement. We can now go into the middle of the field, hitting all of these guys nicely with burning. Um, but that's not all. They also on top of that get poison as you can uh, see. So now they are burning. They do have feather uh, twice on them and they do have poison on top of uh, that, uh, which really means 6% damage here. Feather will deal more damage, 15% uh, damage from uh, burning. So they are in a world of pain and we haven't even started. Like all uh, that we did was uh, throw an offhand and that's about it. We are continuing. Uh, to hit the targets that are best defended uh, just uh, to showcase how well this build is doing 500 points of damage uh, for uh, the defender there and what we can do is this guy having counter attacks no he does not okay perfect that's what I wanted to show Let's start with weakening him. That also creates more damage. We're following up by even more damage. We're using a skill for yet more damage. And then there's, uh, there's the kill. Um, we could, in order to just fully utilize uh, that sprint and get uh, this guy going, and then we're hiding behind the uh, front line. So, it uh, was not even kind of the most instrumental turn ever, but I think it's a good one to see an average turn play out. What did we do? We deleted uh, from 100 to 0 a uh, full tank in the front. We removed the almost entire um, armor from uh, that tank. Uh, we got every single one of them burning, which means they are now going to take additional 15% uh, fire damage at the end of their turn and we poisoned every single one of uh, them if they would be a little bit more damaged i can promise you that we would have cleaned up five people with uh, that uh, one uh, with that one combination all we did was spend three valor at the end of the day so it wasn't even uh, the worst mind you had we killed more of them we would have even gotten some valor back all right, we're done with the build guide and deep dive uh, to the specific class. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like guides, I do have plenty of them for War Tales. If you enjoyed what you've seen and took value out of it, I would appreciate if you leave a like and a comment uh, down below. That always helps to propel the videos and helps the channel. And it's a little bit of given, uh, given back. Thanks for watching. See you on the next guide and have a great day. Bye bye.